Now just recently I came across uh, this article on LWN.net which is I guess like a news website for the Linux ecosystem. I don't really actually know. I've never really properly looked at this. Read a supported news site dedicated to producing the best coverage from the Linux and free software development communities. Anyway, it's got the Tux, Penguin, whatever, so it's Linux, okay? And uh, there was an article recently called A Mouseless Tale Trying for a Keyboard-Driven Desktop. Kind of piqued my interest, because if you've been watching my videos over the time that I've been making them, you probably know I'm not a fan of the mouse. In fact, I'm actually driven by having uh, the home row as my focus for using the desktop. And what I mean by that is I don't even really like um, contorting my hands. I like being on the home row and then if I need to use like shortcuts or if I bind keys to um, be close to the home row or even uh, mainly using case statements in shell scripting so that I can just type normally and do a command or an action. I hope that makes sense. Look over my videos. This is quite a, a broad subject because what we're talking about here is your whole computing experience being driven by the keyboard. And this article, this, uh, this year, Joe Brockmier, it has his opinion on trying to achieve that. I've got my own. Whose is better? Does it matter? Is there a huge difference? Well, let's first of all have a look at uh, Joe Brockmeyer's idea of a keyboard-driven desktop and then mine and maybe some sort of conclusion. So let's start off. So let's look at the screen. Oh, and a one last thing actually, sorry. I will say if I do use the mouse, the mouse, I use the track point, which is next on and along the home row, let's say. So again, I'm not having to leave the home row if I have to use it. And as a caveat to this, I am not even a huge fan of the track point. It is just the least bad option. I like using keys. That's just how I am. Now, again, we'll get into this. Is this possible? Can I even avoid doing that? We will find out. So. Now, with these articles, as you know, I'm not going to read these out word by word. I hate that. I'm not a fan of YouTubers who do it, but I understand why they do it. So let's just sort of get into it. So he's sort of given a summary of um, the mouse, whatever. Uh, and he's talking about ergonomic and productivity. Now he's already including how to achieve this mouseless environment. Paper WM, Vimium browser extension, and so called input remapper, and more. Okay, so let's first of all break down the significant part of this. Paper WM, scrollable window tiling. Now, be aware, this is not really a window manager as such. This is an extension for the um, GNOME, the GNOME desktop, okay? So let's have a look at this. We'll look at the GitHub. If it loads, okay, told scrollable window manager for the GNOME shell, okay? Now, that doesn't matter necessarily. I've covered window tiling in the uh, in a video for Linux Mint using, basically using Cinnamon, but the equivalent GNOME desktop uh, foundation. So let's just say, look at that video if you want to see that. So, Okay, he's saying that using a window tiling manager is keyboard driven. Now, of course it is, of course it is. I use i3, so if I go, for example, here, this is a window tiling thing, and as you can see, I'm just using shortcuts. I can put screen key on to show you. So super, the super key, uh, enter or return gives a new window. I can manually tile them, all this kind of thing. There's so many window tilers. Look it up. I've done so much videos on this. So as you can see, there we go. And again, using the terminal, I can type in commands and whatever. No mouse needed. And importantly, if I'm in the TTY, uh, the Linux terminal, the Linux console, there is no mouse um, functionality, functionality, with the exception of GPM, but really, you don't need to use GPM. As far as I'm concerned, 
you just need the keyboard okay now I won't rush into how I do things too much but I'm just giving you a summary of how I approach this so you know he says all these things about it fine 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 we know this already if you've watched my videos so a good idea though is a window tiler because you are again having to focus on the text flow the um, data uh, data flow you're having to focus on text driven environment space that's what it is when you're using a window manager particularly a window manager you're really setting it to a terminal okay and a terminal is by definition really about using text inputs outputs all this kind of stuff um, however I do and I'm aware that yes terminals do have mouse control and that but that's really um, superfluous bloat whatever you want to call it terminals are by definition focused around text you make the option if you want to to use the mouse okay so again he's just saying how he does it I, I do it my own way it doesn't matter just if you're getting into that you're not going to necessarily need the mouse you might want the mouse maybe you think you have to have the mouse now of course with a window manage uh, window uh, Tyler and all this kind of thing window manager yes you can load graphical user interface programs like your browser which we're going to get into in a minute and other graphical environment programs don't worry I'm going to cover how I approach that so uh, Firefox bookmark keyword so okay let's sort of get into uh, this so obviously as you can see I'm using my own um, so this this is sort of one thing so he's got Firefox bookmark keywords and Vimium Firefox extension now as far as I'm concerned these are one and the two, two things because what you're doing with say the Vimium Firefox extension is you are creating Vim keys which again are like home row keys and sh and keyboard shortcuts to run your browser okay I'm gonna put on screen key again let's put this on to give you some context okay so if you watch at the bottom I'm using J K and that to go up uh, I guess I can do control U to go up control D to, to go down now I'm using a Vim Vixen which is like uh, the Vimium Firefox extension I don't know technically what's better but that's what I use okay so again these are all like Vim keys now let's look at a getting a, a bookmark okay so I can hit T and as you can see bookmarks are on the bottom so I can start typing in uh, let's go customize Firefox okay and now I can hit tab highlight that and that will open that now Firefox has its own extensions already so I can do control W and kill that window or I could have done D and killed that window and obviously I can do control uh, tab to do that now again if you want to keep on the home row you can do B for buffer and I can type 1 uh, I can do alt one two you see what I'm getting at here so that is great now here is where things get messy if you want to if you want to use certain websites namely the one you might be watching this video on using um, extensions on uh, let's say JavaScript um, loading elements on your page becomes messy I'm not to say that uh, you can't use so okay let's put this in perspective so if I type F if I type F if you look at the page it give assigns a key to each uh, link okay or each element that is um, loadable so if I type I for the FAQ as you can see it goes to that and obviously I can go back like okay so you're using again the keyboard to drive your user experience so if I use the mouse to click on it instead of that obviously I'm using the mouse that's why however some elements some JavaScript elements on some popular websites are not workable with this extension maybe it's better with the Vimium Firefox extension you can tell me but sometimes you do just have to use the mouse or in my case the track point okay so there's my 
slight problem with that. So he's he's sort of saying that um, he's saying the same sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure if he covers some of the JavaScript things. Okay. And then he's sort of going into terminals. Well, again, by definition, if you use an X term, alacrity, I know URXVT, all this, you know, the, the focus is, I'm afraid to say, text, not the mouse. I know you can get mouse use case, that's fine. I'm not literally against that. You do you, whatever you want. Now, mouseless Emacs and Vim, I mean, Vim by definition, okay, you've got GVim, but GVim, sorry, it's just stupid. You, you can use GVim if you want, but. Vim by definition is just that, is text driven. That's the whole point. Now remapping keys to mice. Now I did a video on remapping um, my, uh, what key was it? I'm trying to remember, I was uh, I'll remapping the left mouse point, uh, the left mouse button on, well in this case on a ThinkPad. That had, I had some issues with my main computer with the left mouse button on the ThinkPad mouse button that is and I remapped it and I did a whole video on this and that included um, using um, a program that allowed you to effectively have accessibility controls where you could use uh, the numpad to move the mouse up down left and right so this is sort of kind of stuff what he's going into okay so again you can read this whole article I'll put it in the description um, whatever. Now, there's one caveat to all this. He is focusing on the GNOME desktop environment, okay? Paper WM is an extension on the GNOME desktop environment. Now, he's also not talking about the Vimium Firefox extension in regards to um, JavaScript, okay? JavaScript is a problem and can be a problem with using shortcuts and stuff. I hit F, like I said. It will put a, and assign a key, but if you press that key, it says like a hamburger menu, that JavaScript element will just do nothing. You have to left mouse click. Now, if this can be solved by using a uh, Vimium Firefox extension, I don't know. I'm not so sure because it's, it's doing the same thing, but let me know in the comments. So, you know, am I impressed by this? Well, look here, look here. Here's the other thing. He's showing all these graphical user interfaces that are mouse driven. They are mouse driven. Yes, you can probably use keys, you can whatever. So he's not really got a mouseless environment. It's not really striving for a mouseless environment. It's using all these configuration tools that, for example, that require mouse. The GNOME desktop environment, KDE, are all effectively mouse driven, unless he does it all from the terminal, but he's showing this. Okay, now we can do all this without that. Watch my videos. I've already mentioned configuring keys. So let me put it this way. I do 90% of what I do in the Linux terminal, in the Linux console. This is the TTY, this is before the graphical environment loads up, so there is no mouse. Yes, GPM exists, I know. Okay, so when do I have to load the graphical environment? For the web browser, okay? Yes, there's technically other graphical user interface programs. And with the web browser, yes, you can tab through that, but it's that isn't fast. Vim Vixen, or I guess this Vimium Chromex, uh, Chrome YouTube extension is going to do 90% of your browser shortcuts, but it is also not going to do all of it, unless proven wrong, okay? And so how do I therefore drive my um, tiling window manager. How do I get all this functionality? Well, you just script it all. You script it all in a terminal. All this stuff is command line interface. I've got all these things here. These are all mapped to, um, let's turn off screen key. These are all mapped to case statements. So I can just put in these keys, hit enter, and it will load all these things. Okay, and 90% of this is in the TTY, is where I work where I do my stuff, yes, including videos. I've done videos on all this stuff. So, I would say mine's the better way. Using 
Look, if you're using a desktop environment, you're already setting yourself up to fail with this. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm not saying that you can't literally do it, but you need, if you want a, dr a driven mouseless environment, you need to drive yourself to the terminal. You need to drive yourself away from KDE, you know, all this stuff and focus on a window manager, a proper window manager without a graphical environment. Use the TTY. It's almost possible. One day we will get there, but there we are not yet. Okay. So again, all this stuff, including email, searching stuff, music, video, word processing, backups, screens, you know, even loading the um, graphical user interface. I even the graphical user interface, you know, it's not 90 to 100% of the time I'm not using it. And yes, there are those few exceptional websites where I have to. So, you know, have a look through this article if this is useful to you. But I would say follow me, follow what I've just described. And that's how you'll get almost, almost a mouseless environment. You're not going to probably get it from here. Okay. A, a, you know, a noble attempt, but I don't know. I'm just not impressed, really. Not impressed. Not impressed. Okay, so there you go. I just thought like I'd highlight my way of doing it, the way this person is doing it. Um, that's it, really. So, uh, actually, let me know what you think on this. It would be interesting to know. Um, I've given you my examples. I'll put them in the description. And look at my previous videos. That will tell you everything you need to <clears throat> need to know. Okay, but it's it's not that difficult. Not that difficult. I literally my first videos are like setting up Arch Linux, setting up all this stuff. I'll get you there. Don't worry. Anyway, so um, you know what to do with the fake YouTube. You can like, comment, subscribe, and uh, obviously I want to give special thanks to Sean and HTX80 Nerd and uh, Soul. These are my uh, membership subscribers who um, get early access to my videos and have themselves on the end screen. So I hope to see more of you guys there. It'll be great. So thanks guys very much. And uh, that's all in the description. Anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll see you in the next one.